There's a new study that may suggest we are not alone. A group of researchers say they've identified at least seven stars that might be surrounded by super advanced alien megastructures known as Dyson spheres. What if someday we could build a superstructure so big we could basically surround our sun and capture its energy directly? Could we catch glimpses of advanced alien civilizations in the stars? And if we could, what would they be doing? A civilization so advanced they've built colossal structures around their stars to capture every last drop of energy. What are these Dyson spheres and how do we find them? They might just be real and scientists are on the hunt for them right now. So are we on the brink of finding alien life or is this just another cosmic wild goose chase? Stick around because the truth is more mind-blowing than you might think. So let's break it down. What is a Dyson Sphere? A Dyson Sphere is this wild idea where an advanced civilization builds a giant structure around a star to capture its energy. Think of it as putting solar panels around the sun, but on a mind-boggling scale. And guess what? We could potentially detect these spheres and in doing so, find signs of alien life. Now. Why would they do this? Well, here on Earth, we get about 1,361 watts of energy per square meter from the Sun. But that's just a drop in the cosmic bucket compared to the Sun's total output. 380 billion quadrillion watts per second. If we harness all of that power, that's where the Dyson Sphere comes in, capturing every bit of energy that would otherwise zoom off into space. There's something called a Kardashev civilization, named for Nikolai Kardashev, who's an astrophysicist. If you look at the history of what we call great civilizations, one of the things that distinguishes them is their capacity to generate and consume energy. And so if that's the case, you can think of levels of civilization based on how much energy they consume. And thus was born the Kardashev scale. A type one civilization uses all the energy available on its planet. That's us. But we're only about a 0.74. So we've got some work to do. On the other hand, a type two civilization would use all the energy from its star, which means Dyson sphere level, harnessing a star's energy. That's one way to keep the lights on for a few billion years. Now, keep the lights on your notifications by liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell. So back to type two civilization. What does that look like? Civilization type two on a Kardashev scale is, well, what else is generating energy out there? Well, our host star, the sun. So imagine we had total control over the sun's energy. Right now, we just set up a few solar panels here and there, and it's, you know, we're, you know, whatever energy happens to get there on a clear day and not at night, that we're tapping some of the energy of the sun. But the sun is emitting energy in every single direction in space. So imagine you could harness all of that energy. That's vastly more energy than is contained in the Earth. That would be a civilization of extraordinary power. Would they have warp drives, wormholes? Who knows? They'd be traveling across the galaxy, between galaxies, because the energy is so plentiful and they have access to it and especially can control it. It's a big factor when you have access to awesome supplies of energy. And type three? They'd be using all the energy in their entire galaxy. I mean, can you even wrap your head around that? We're still struggling to figure out how to power our whole planet without blowing it up. And these guys are sucking down energy from an entire galaxy, controlling stars like they're just giant fiery light bulbs. Or maybe they've even figured out how to harness black holes for power. That's some next level stuff, right? If you haven't seen a baby hippo before, well, brace yourself. 
because he is one in all its squishy glory. The brilliant physicist Freeman Dyson invented the concept of a Dyson sphere in 1960. Here's what he wrote in a paper that year, in which he first explained the idea. One should expect that within a few thousand years of its entering the stage of industrial development, any intelligent species should be found occupying an artificial biosphere which completely surrounds its parent star. But he didn't just pull it out of thin air. He was inspired by sci-fi, like Olaf Stapledon's novel Star Maker. Dyson thought, how could we detect a civilization that doesn't want to talk? His answer? Look for massive, energy-absorbing structures in space, and boom, the Dyson sphere was born. By the way, Freeman Dyson was a total genius. He wasn't just about space megastructures, he explored everything from quantum physics to nuclear-powered spacecraft. Now that's what I call a diverse portfolio. You're not wrong if you think this sounds like something straight out of Star Trek. Cause an episode of Star Trek, The Next Generation, features a Dyson Sphere. But they got one thing wrong. It was depicted as a giant, solid shell which would never work. Dyson himself clarified that a swarm of smaller solar collectors would make more sense. So next time you watch Star Trek, you can impress your friends with that tidbit. If we wanted to build a Dyson swarm because a solid sphere is out, we'd need a ton of materials, like planet-sized amounts. Astronomer Stuart Armstrong suggests dismantling Mercury might do the trick. Yep. Chop up an entire planet. Starting small, we'd build a solar array to generate enough energy to mine asteroids and build even more arrays, like a cosmic Lego set where each piece builds another. And when you think, that's impossible. Remember, it would start small and grow over time. Kinda like a snowball rolling downhill, except the snowball is made of solar panels and the hill is outer space. But hey, who said saving the galaxy was easy? If these structures existed, there'd be so much energy that human scientists on Earth could probably spot it because it would emit a lot of infrared radiation. So in this new study, researchers say they found seven sources glowing in the infrared, those are their words, but couldn't find an obvious explanation for why these sources are glowing so much, which could mean they're Dyson spheres or something else entirely. So, astronomers are hunting for objects in space glowing a little too warmly to find a Dyson sphere. But it's tricky because natural objects can also give off similar signals. So we've got to rule those out before we get too excited. Enter Project Hephaestus. A group of Swedish scientists, joined by colleagues from Penn State and the Indian Institute of Technology at Indore, decided to go full Sherlock Holmes on space. They dove into historical data from telescopes, hunting for anything that might give off infrared signatures from stars within 1,000 light-years of Earth. Think of it as a cosmic scavenger hunt. But instead of candy, they're looking for potential alien megastructures. And speaking of adventure, look at this mama squirrel packing her child for their journey. Their initial search wasn't exactly small potatoes. They started with a whopping five million possible hits. Imagine sifting through that many space images. So like any good detective, they applied filters to trim the data, trying to eliminate the mundane and keep the juicy stuff. After all that, they were left with just seven intriguing candidates. But here's where it gets tricky. Suazo and his team don't have enough data to pinpoint the exact cause of the glow. Could these stars be surrounded by Dyson spheres? Those mythical megastructures straight out of sci-fi? Possibly. But they might also be something far less exciting. All seven mysterious stars are classified as red dwarfs. Think of them as the universe's pint-sized powerhouses, they're smaller than our sun, but make up the majority of stars in the universe. 
Red dwarves are proof that good things come in small packages, especially when glowing like neon signs. And according to NASA, planets orbiting these stars might have a better shot at being habitable. So, could these red dwarves be hosting some advanced alien neighbors? One alternative explanation could be galaxies lurking behind these stars whose radiation is sneaking through and making it look like the stars are glowing more than they are. Another possibility is that these stars are young and still rocking their protoplanetary disks, which naturally emit infrared radiation. The team admits it could all just be a natural phenomenon. They suggest that we need bigger and better telescopes with direct imaging capabilities to figure out what's going on, rather than relying on the surveyor observatories like WISE and Gaia that they used. In a recent study posted on the preprint server ArcZeev, a new team of astronomers took a closer look at those seven potential Dyson Sphere candidates. What did they find? Three of the seven candidates are cozying to a peculiar galaxy called a hot dog or hot dust obscured galaxy. Hot dogs in space? Don't get too excited. They're not the snack, but they are still sizzling. Yep, space has hot dogs, surrounded by enormous thick dust clouds. This warm dust is a pro at emitting infrared radiation, making it look like the stars themselves are glowing when it's just the cosmic equivalent of someone blowing smoke. As for the other four stars, the researchers argue that they're probably also victims of these dusty hot dogs, even though we don't have enough detailed observations to say for sure. So while this new research doesn't wholly rain on the alien megastructure parade, it does make the search for extraterrestrial life a bit trickier. It's a reminder that astronomy can be as complex as it is fascinating, and that sometimes a cosmic mystery is just a matter of perspective. If we ever find more conclusive evidence of advanced civilizations, we'll have to work extra hard to prove they're not just another cosmic hot dog. Now that we've cracked open the mystery of Dyson spheres and these potential alien megastructures, you might be thinking, what's next? Well, you don't want to miss what's coming up. We're diving deep into the next level, becoming a Type 2 civilization. And trust me, this isn't just a casual leap from where we are today. Imagine harnessing the full power of a star, and that's just scratching the surface. If you thought Dyson spheres were mind-blowing, Wait until you see what it takes to get us there.